Memorial Day to Labor Day. We opened it early because it got really hot really quick. And we had some schools that had requested it last year to have into school parties. So we already knew it was going to open on Monday, but Ron got it done on Friday. So that's all we did. We opened it. Um, it's been packed nonstop since. <clears throat> Really, there's too many kids on that little pad, but they have fun. So that's something probably we need to look yeah. at ahead. Yep. One somewhere on this end of town. Mm -hmm. Nichols Park, I don't know if you've driven through it. We have a bathhouse out there now. And we approved last night to have all the plumbing and everything ran for it. So we will have true bathrooms and showers out there in the next month or so. Mm -hmm. uh, Quick Trip is slow going, but they, it's a done deal. And they will be up and running by April of 19. They will be fully open by then. But the wall to hold that side of the hill up has been hindered a little bit. It's probably going to be about $2 million for the wall itself. By what the engineers have predicted they need to hold that. And who's going to pay for that? What trip? He's not going to get the Mexicans to pay for it? Maybe. Okay. Trump told him, you know, that would be our wall. <laughs> the West property, I don't know if you all are aware that we own property out on the west side of town. And it's at the other exit by Pig Out. We are running sewer out there currently. They have water out there, but we, when they ran water, they didn't run sewer. Nobody really knows how that occurred, why it occurred. But for the low, low price of about half a million dollars, we're getting sewer rain out there. Thanks to HEDA for funding that to allow it to happen. And we have multiple people that have been looking at that. We can't disclose who or what yet, but we have people that would like to build in that area. And we're waiting on DEQ to approve the state plans to be able to go forward with that. Because they had a few changes that they went on fencing and the lift stations and things to that effect. And so that's been resubmitted to DEQ waiting on their approval. So that should move forward too. We will have a new website. Our website was um, pretty ridiculous and was very expensive and hard to work, hard to navigate, and not user friendly in any way, shape, or form. But we voted last night to allow Bruce Jones to build us a website. So he will be doing that. Um, the gun range at Nichols has been fenced. That's something that our liability insurance has asked us to do for about five years but it was expensive, so it got put on the back burner, but it is done. Well, almost Close. done. Yeah. The barbed wire isn't up the last I looked. It's not what we're we got some gates and things, but. Looks really good. We had to fence that off mostly because we're allowing the racing out there. And although we know that nobody's gonna be out there shooting because it's a closed range, <clears throat> OMAG had told us that their biggest claim was a gun range and a swimming pool two biggest claims they've ever had. Which we get grief about it being in a park anyway. So it was just easier to fence it and be done. <clears throat> I don't know if you've driven out to the industrial park off of 75, but the Eastern Oklahoma Family Clinic is near complete. They're looking at tentatively ribbon cutting on the 22nd. We were in it yesterday. Day before, Monday. Monday, yeah, Monday. We were in it Monday and they were painting and finishing things up, but it was complete as far as I could tell. They were just doing touch up. The flooring in the front probably wasn't complete, but the rest of it was. It's pretty big. If you haven't been out there to look at it, you should go look. Um, just lots of things are happening in Henrietta. Everything's going good as far as I know. Do you have anything to add to it, Ron? <laughs> well, the beach area should have a Oh, yeah, volleyball. Yeah, the volleyball is up. It's done. The new sands there. The new nets are up. The swimming area. Uh, uh, we've got. Hopefully, if the weather holds out, we'll have the new sand for the swimming area. And uh, people might say, "Why well, we keep putting new sand?" Well, the sand that gets washed out into the swimming area just makes it nicer for the swimmers to have a sandy bottom going out there as they're swimming. Uh, and like I said, we're going to try to have all that beach area by Friday, weather permitting. Looking nice with some fresh sand out across there also. And there is no issues with Nichols Park water. We have tested it, tested it, tested it. We have had DEQ out there multiple times with people saying there's things in the water. There are things in the water. It's water and it's lake water. So there are fish in there and there are creatures in there.
them that we may not all like, but they're there. And that is just part of being in a lake. They say you won't get leeches if you do not get in the grassy areas. That's where they were getting them because they're natural to the water. So if you're in the grassy areas, now the beach has taken over the majority of that. But when we first opened it, there was <coughs> the grass coming through the bottom. And so there was a few leeches. What were those other things called that looked like jellyfish? That was a year before last. Right. It was a form of a jellyfish, but they yeah. weren't harmful to But they have humans. little cones that yes. if you stepped on or something, these little cones came out. Yes. We had them come look at that too, and they said, <coughs> part of the lake. <coughs> but we had people catching them and bringing them to the city hall. Look at these. What is this? Why are they going to kill us? <laughs> yeah, the, those freshwater jellyfish things you hear about us all the time. <laughs> Do y'all have any questions? Oh, the hospital, Keith can tell you this, we're, it's in full remodel, I don't know if you've seen it, but the emergency room, we're changing the whole outlay of it. The, you're gonna, where the emergency room entrance is now will be ambulance only. The entrance will be a triage spot on the west side. $3 million remodel that's in full swing. And all the pictures we've seen, it looks pretty amazing. It's actually closer to four with some of the changes. Right, and yeah. with, we've already done this surgery. Yes. Yeah. Remodel. And you just can't shut down the hospital and remodel it. You have to mm -hmm. adjust every area. So we had to move all medical records over to the dialysis building. The dialysis <coughs> Now we have different doctors running over there, mm -hmm. and we have medical records all over there. So then they could start blocking areas off for the remodel. Because it'll be entirely rerouted. Mm -hmm. And should be able to service a lot more people than they currently are. Well, there'll be three, three triage rooms from yes. the start. So when you come in, instead of sitting in one local waiting room, you're going to get seen yes. right in yeah. by a nurse, and they're going to put you at what level? They're going to tell you, okay, you're probably going to be here two hours mm -hmm. because you have a hangnail. And we don't have time for that right now. But you have a gunshot wound, so we'll get you right in. And you keep the people with germs away from their wounds. You know, yes. With her gunshot wound, she doesn't want to sit next to a guy with a flu and then coughing all over her. And anybody that's contagious, typically they're going to put a mask on yes. and move them to a different area. And that's the meaning behind that instead of all of you sitting in the same room mm -hmm. for two or three hours. Yeah. In and our room. That other room is so tiny. Oh, yes. Yes. You're all right. yes. You know, we see a ton of people oh, out yes. here. You have no idea how many people come through that. Somewhere around 12,000. Mm -hmm. And it's significant. But Creek Nation also refers over here. They may not now as much since Okima is up and running, but they were sending a lot our way instead of going that way. And it, it's huge what they see. Out there, you know, I know everybody's like, oh, they get so crabby, the ER doctors are so mean, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, you get the drug seekers that come in, mm -hmm. you get the people that are really sick, then you get the ones that really should have went to a doctor's office but decided to come to the ER at 505 because they didn't want to wait to get into the doctor. So it does get frustrating when you do have people that are legitimately having a heart attack or have a car wreck that they need to be taken care of and they have somebody that's there because they just didn't want to make a doctor's appointment. <clears throat> and Dr. Glidden is a little gruff, but he, uh, if I had to have somebody to work on me, I would definitely choose him because he knows his trauma. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Is there any progress on the, well, I guess, proposal or the thought that had us sent to the council about? assisting those up and down on Main Street with a uh, small grant or a road. Yeah, mainly to improve their frontage. Front. Right. <clears throat> we talk to our liability insurance and we can't do that. The city cannot do that because we are not engineers, architects, or anything to that nature. So what the proposal was the chamber, actually, is who it mm -hmm. came through. Great. It said that they wanted Donna the interim city manager to approve everything and sign off that it was appropriate. Well, we can't do that because if it falls on somebody's head, then what? So we referred it back to them and said, you know, you might just give them a grant to do it and let them hire their own contractor. 
or allow them to come to you with a bid from a contractor saying, here's what I got, this is what I want to do, and allow it to proceed that way. And there was other questions that the city attorney had of who do you decide gets it? Because there was only X amount of dollars yeah, to give. Amount mm -hmm. of funds to fund it, and, and it was basically on first come, first serve, but then some may have, may have to wait a year and it said only Main Street, so right. then we also got the question of what if they were on 4th or what yes. if they were on 5th, Trugin. and they wanted to do the front of theirs, yeah, or Trujan, and why wasn't that covered? And where does Main Street end? end? Where does Main right. Street end? So there's a long answer, but... It's a good concept, it. though. It is. Well, so, and we were trying to blueprint some of the other communities that have a specific downtown theme, and we don't really have a downtown mm -hmm. theme. And uh, it worked, it, it seemed to work better when you had a theme because then you could kind of make everybody look similar. And, and uh, if, if you don't have one, you just have a hodgepodge and who knows what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, that's about all we have going on in the city right now our uh, water plant settlement that's done we have completed all of that so we're not paying a ton of attorney fees <clears throat> like that but our local citizen still hasn't stopped requesting a billion records so we're still paying attorney and fees for that we have our new water holding tank we do. Up the million gallon holding. tank we'll be putting henriette on that at some point in block letters mm -hmm that it has to be a contractor that does that because of the material that's on there. And we were waiting for everything to settle before we started that. And at the head of meeting, I was surprised at the cost. Would you like to share that with everybody? I mean, the cost of the tank? Putting the name on it? Oh, the, probably ten to $15,000 just to put Henrietta on it. It was gonna be 50,000 to put the logo on there. So we said, nah, we'll go with some block layers. <laughs> Would you want to be on top of that tank that paint? I mean, that's just, that takes a Oh, uh, well, the guys that did that tank, DM tanks, they were amazing. You know, it went up just like that. It was, it was crazy, wasn't it, Bruce? It was the most amazing thing you can imagine. They laid the walls out, and then they literally just put them in place. They had them poured and ready to go. It was cool watching them just pick those sides up and put them on there. Well, and tearing the old one down. They did it in one day. Yeah. The fun part, they had... everything out of there by 2 o'clock that day. In the new tank, they had all that scaffolding inside, and they had an area, oh, probably about the size of this sign here. They tore all the scaffolding down, and it went out through that hole. I crawled in there just because. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to go inside the tank so I could say I was in there, because once it's filled with water, you can't ever do that again. So I made him go too. Did you write your name on the inside? I did. <laughs> I did. The contractor was with us. And when you get inside there, you have no idea how large that is until you step in there. And it was huge. We were standing in the center of it, and it was like we were just this little dot in the middle of this huge building. But it's one window, like he said, and that's where everything comes in and out once they start building it. They did put taps on the outside of it so they didn't have to climb up there every time to get their water samples. And it worked out well. We thought we were going to have to drain the whole tank because they have to bleach the walls to clean them. But they went slow enough that it all evaporated so we didn't have to fill it and drain it and lose all that frigid water. We have, if you haven't ever taken a tour of the water plant, it's pretty amazing to see how our water is made. And we have top five best waters in the state. Our water is equal to smart water. It has, we increase the pH so then it tastes a little sweet and it is equal to smart water. Dasani that you buy was bottled in not moldy, they don't need requirements, just telling you. So if you buy Dasani water, you can drink in Henrietta, you're better off drinking Henrietta water. <laughs> 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 buildings that really look for it. Are there any rules in the city that cover that? Jody has coded multiple people, but you can throw a fine at anybody you want. They can pay it or they can 
not pay it, you can throw them in jail. But what are you going to do? I mean, we get the whole, we abated a bunch of houses, but you have to work the process to get there. The buildings on Main Street are a little harder because we can't dictate how the inside of that building looks. We can only go by what code enforces for the rest of it. And it's been a challenge because I know there's multiple on Main Street that are, nobody wants to look in them because they're disgusting. But that is the worst part of code and city regulations. But it's also to protect the owners. So you can't just come in and take somebody's property without a reason. And that's getting more and more strict. They keep passing legislation every year giving the owners more control than the city has because of big businesses coming in and taking over. And Jody codes a lot. He even codes council members if he has to. He codes firemen, he codes police, whatever he needs to do because if it's in the code book, it is what it is. <clears throat> But no, we cannot force them to do upkeep of their buildings other than what is in our code books. So there are some codes, but it doesn't address like boarded up windows or... Boarded up windows are acceptable. They are acceptable. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they are. Did Nokia have a, like one of their front walls fail on the main street? Mm -hmm. Just kind of bowed out. Yep, fell into the main street. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think that's the first time that happened no. here either. Any other questions? Anybody? We're moving right along though, I think. We have a good team in place. We have uh, streets, it's full crew. First time in a few years it's been full crew. That's why you see them filling holes and doing things. And they actually have all of them with a CDL license. So mm -hmm. it's been easy to move them around, train them, and get things going, whereas before we were waiting to send some to school to get a CDL and mm -hmm. all of that. But we're good. Police and fire contracts got accepted last night because they're the two unions we have in the city. <clears throat> and they were happy with what they got. And council meeting was done in 33 minutes, actually. Oh, no. You do move that along well. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be four or five hours when I first got on the council mm -hmm. with a room full of people. And now we're lucky if anybody's there. Last night we had a couple, but they were just there over the abatement and police. But I had uh, about 150 were watching streaming. <clears throat> so that, uh, that's probably where a bunch of that's going to. They're seeing it live. Well, they can see it live, but they didn't come before. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think it's good that they can watch it live and they watch the school board meetings live, too. We appreciate you doing that, Bruce. But I've also had it used against me. Go to 4 minutes and 33 seconds and see what Jennifer said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we know. <laughs> well, if I can do anything for any of you, Holler, Ron's always available as well, so is Donna. <clears throat> get that fixed and then they found some random lines that we didn't even know were down there. Yeah, and then we just uh, did a cement job last week where we said we kind of get caught up with some cement work on the streets. Looked great and then I had a call like an hour later, someone drove the car through it. Oh. <laughs> so if it seems a little rough on fourth over the tracks, you know we Worked it in the best we could. We're gonna have to address it at a different time, but like I said, when we got it, was within an hour or somewhere. Yeah, you could tell where they drove in it. Yes. You know, that kind of thing happens, but everybody's gonna say, well, they did a terrible, well, they did. We worked with what we had after someone drove through to see that for the setting. That's what we got. So. Even though it was blocked. Oh, yeah, we had cones all the time. Yeah. <laughs> We can and we have, but that's not a very popular thing to do. I can tell you this, we are losing money on trash. Significant amount of money on trash because um, Center Point Landfill increased their rates last year and the city didn't increase the rates, so we're losing money. 
on that. It was $13,000 that we paid last night for one month of service for trash. And there's no way for us to do it. We don't have a landfill, so we have to depend on somebody else. <clears throat> and they're out of prayer. <coughs> I think it's where they're at. Aren't they paying so. pray yeah, so somewhere over there? <clears throat> and they're nice. They just they are getting job. full, too. They're right. running out of trash. Room. But we can raise water rates, and I have done it, I think, twice since I've been on the council for five years. And believe me, if you want the council halls full of people, just say you're going to raise water rates and you'll have 50 people at that meeting. We are getting our audit. Buck's audit is coming. So that's going to be fifty dollars to $75,000. They will be here on the 30th. They've already called to meet with Don and I on the 30th to discuss what is pending of the audit and what they will want while they are here. Last time, we catered to them for nine weeks. They were here. They found nothing. This time, I don't know that we're going to do all of that. We'll probably hand them the books and go, good luck. Because it was, it was a lot of work that got us nowhere. Because that's how they make the money. The state auditor's office makes fifty to $75,000 to come do that. So why wouldn't they keep repeating? Doing it. <clears throat> I tried to get legislation put in that if you've already done one audit for a city and they found nothing, that they should have to put up a bond. Mm -hmm. Because if you run for an election and you lose and you want to contest that, you have to put up a bond. Nothing, nothing like that is for anybody that wants to do an audit. All they have to have is 10% of voters from the last election sign the petition. You know how many people sh show up to vote in Henrietta? Mm -hmm. Not very many. Less than 800 at some point. 10%. Yeah. And so you only have to have 10% of that. Mm -hmm. So will we have another increase on our water bills at the school now? We've already done that. We already have that put back. For this audit, he already has one back in it. Already back to back. They told us at the state auditor's office they can basically put this one out as far as they can. They do have some embezzlement wounds right now, so I don't know when they're truly going to be here for a long period of time. They said they weren't real worried about ours because it's not money. Well, you know, our failed water plant this really isn't failed. Um, it doesn't work to the capacity. We had, when you are a city and it's tax dollars, you have to file suit if something isn't the exact way it should have been because it's not our money. It's taxpayers' money. So who am I to just go, oh, let's settle that. Let's just say, oh, it's good enough and call it good. No, you have to litigate it. So the river water intake does not run to the capacity that it should. It runs about half. So it's not something that could sustain water for the city of Henrietta. So that's why we had to litigate it. That is all done. It works. We could use it. It's not something we would use routinely. But if something happened to the lake, we could use it as a backup. And now with a million gallon tank, it wouldn't be that big of an issue. But without the million gallon tank, it would have been, we would have been without water in probably 10 hours. <clears throat> now we have a couple days. And as long as we can continue to pump, we're good. But the water quality from the river to the lake is totally different. We can't mix them. It has to be one or the other to get the chemicals correct. And that's the other issue. We are looking at running a pipeline into the back of the lake with the river intake. And they used to always say, DEQ said, no, OWRB, no, not happening. It's different water quality. We're not allowing it to happen. Well, it happened in Oklahoma City because they were running out of water. So now they can't stop others from doing it. So that's what we're looking at is running a pipeline back there, which wouldn't be that expensive to run it into the back of the lake to supplement on the years that we have low water. So then is it basically what a lobby does for yeah. the two lakes? It is. <clears throat> and Aunt Mulgee calls Henry in all the time for water issues. But I, all in all, the city's running better than it's ran in many years. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's working as a team. There's not a bunch of backstabbing going on. Everybody legitimately works and tries to get things moving forward. We, you know, I got a $450,000 grant with the help of a couple other council members. We had one week to complete that for that water tower. And we literally jumped through hoops, went door to door ourselves to do the whole survey for the Department of Commerce 
to get it done. And then we had to put it on a map of the entire city of every door that we knocked on in their survey. <clears throat> but we got it done and that lasts for five years. We couldn't get a grant this year because we got the $450,000 last year and uh, Indian Health Services gave us $199,000. So in that million gallon tank, we got $650,000 covered. That was well worth it. We will probably look for a grant for the sewer coming up. All of their electronics are outdated. Everything is beyond outdated. I don't know if any of you have ever been out there. It's the grossest thing ever. I don't even know how anybody works out there. It is literally, he takes me down in this raw sewage mm. hole and you stand on a metal grate that you're standing over the top of raw sewage. Pumping in from the city nonstop while you're in there. 